We're back in Boston, the Cube's coverage of AWS Reinforced 2022. My name is Dave Vellante. Steve Mullaney is here, he's the CEO of Aviatrix. Long time Cube alum, sort of a collaborator on SuperCloud, yeah. uh, which we have an event uh, August 9th, which you guys are participating in, so um, thank you for that. And yep. Welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you, so, great to be here as always. Back in Boston. Yeah. I'd say good show, not, not like blow me away. We yeah. were at AWS uh, Summit in New York City three weeks ago. I took, heard it took three hours to get in. Out of control. I heard, well there were some people two, I, maybe three, <laughs> but there was, they expected like maybe nine, 10,000, 19,000 yeah. showed up. Now it's a free event. Yeah, 19,000 people. Oh, I didn't Steve. know it was that many. It was okay. unbelievable. I okay. mean, it was packed. Yeah. You know, so it's a little light here, and I think yeah. it's because you know, everybody's down the Cape. They are, in, they are in down the, the Cape the or in Rhode Island. That's after the fourth. The thing is that we were talking about this, the quality of people are pretty good though. Yeah. Right, this is, there's no looky lose It's everybody that's doing stuff in cloud. They're moving in. This is no longer, hey, what's this thing called cloud, right? I remember three, four years ago at AWS, you'd get a lot of that that kind of stuff, some, the summit meetings and things like that. Now it's, we're at full on deployment mode. Even here in 2019, the conversation was like, so there's this shared responsibility model and we may have yeah. to make sure you understand it. I mean, nobody's yeah. questioning that today. Yeah. It's more really hardcore best practices, and, you know, yeah. new, you know, how to apply tools, yeah. you know, do's and don'ts, and so yeah. it's a much more sophisticated yeah. narrative, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, one of the things that Aviatrix does is our whole thing is architecturally, I would say, where does network security belong? In the network. It shouldn't be a bolt-on. It shouldn't be something that you add on. It should be something that actually gets integrated into the fabric of the network. So you shouldn't be able to point to network security. It's like, can you point to the network? It's everywhere. Point to air, it's everywhere. Network security should be integrated in the fabric. And that wasn't done on-prem that way. You steered traffic to this thing called a firewall, but in the cloud, that's not the right architectural way. It, it's a choke point. Uh, operationally adds tremendous amount of complexity, which is the whole reason we're going to cloud in the first place is for that agility and the ability to operationally swipe the card and get our developers running. To put in these choke points is completely the wrong architecture. So conversations we're having with customers is integrate that security into the fabric of the network and you get rid of all those, all those so operational explain issues. explain that, how you're not a, a checkpoint, but if you funnel everything into one yeah. sort of place So in the we cloud, are yeah. a networking company. Uh, it is a uh, cloud networking company, so we, we were born in the cloud, cloud native. We, we are not some on-prem networking solution that was jammed in the cloud. Uh, wrapped in a stack. Wrapped in a, in a, you know, in a VM or yeah, something right. like that. And no, 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 and looking for wires, right? That's <laughs> VM series from Palo Alto. It doesn't even know it's in the cloud, right? It's looking for wires. Yeah. Um, and of course, multi-cloud, because, you know, Larry Ellison now, could you believe that? On oh, stage yeah. with Satya Nadella talking about multi-cloud. Now you really know we've crossed over to this is a, this is a thing. Whoever would have thought you'd see that. But anyway, so we're networking, we're cloud networking, of course it's multi-cloud networking, and we're going to integrate these intelligent services into the fabric, and one of those is, is networking. So what happens is you should do security everywhere. So the place to do it is at every single point in the network that you can make a decision, and you embed it and actually embed it into the network, such that when you're making a decision of does that traffic need to go somewhere or not, you're doing a little bit of security everywhere. And so what it looks like a giant firewall effectively, but it's actually distributed in software through every single point in the network. Can I call it a mesh? It's kind of a mesh. Yeah, you think of, yeah it's a fabric. Okay. It's a, it's a fabric that these advanced services, including security, are integrated into that so, fabric. So you've been in networking you know, much of your 37 career. 37 years. All your career, right? So yep. Bay, Cisco, yep. Palo Alto, Nicira, probably missing one or two. But so, what do you do with Blue all coat. that? Blue coat. Blue coat, what do you do Force with 10. all that stuff that's out there? <laughs> Synoptics. <right? laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep going. If you yeah, know. I think that's yeah. it, that's all okay. I got. So what do you do with all that stuff that's, that's out there? You, Rip and replace it. You sort in of, the cloud, you mean? Yeah, yeah all this or, infrastructure that's out there. What is it? Well, you don't what have it in the, the cloud, cloud right? And so right. right now, what's happening is people look. You can't change too many things if you're a human. You know, they always tell you, don't change a job, get married, and have a kid or something all in the <laughs> same year. Like, they, just, just do one of them because it's too much. <laughs> when people move to the cloud, what they do is they tend to take what they do mm -hmm. on prem, and they say, look, I'm going to change one thing. We're going to go to the cloud. Everything else, I'm going to keep the same because I don't want to change three things. So they kind of 
lift and shift, their same mentality. They take their firewalls, their next gen fire. I want them. They take all the things that they currently do and they say, I'm going to try to do that in the cloud. It's not really the right way to do it, but sometimes for people that are on-prem people, that's the way to get started. And so, not screw it up. And not screw it up and, and not change too many things and look, I'm just used to that. And, and then I'll, then I'll go to change things to be more cloud native. Then I'll realize I can get rid of this and get rid of that and do that. But, but that's where people are. The first thing is bring these things over. We help them do that, right? From a networking perspective, I'll make it easier to bring your old security stuff in. But in parallel to that, we start adding things into the fabric. And what's going to happen is eventually, we start adding all these things and things that you can't do separately. We start doing anomaly detection. We start doing behavioral analysis. Why? Because the entire Network, we are the data plane, we see everything. And so we can start doing things that a standalone device can't do because not all the traffic's steered to them. You can only control what's steered to you. And then eventually what's happening is people look at that device and then they look at us and then they look at the device. They look at us and they go, why do I have both of this? And we go, I don't know. You don't need well, it. Well, can I get rid of that other thing that's a tool? Sure. And there's not but a trade-off? You don't have to. There's not a trade-off. You don't have to. No, okay, right now people will do it, belts and suspenders. Because yeah. it's just, who has, who has enough, who has too much security? Nobody. They're going to they're gonna do belt suspenders, you know, anything they can do, but eventually what will happen is they'll look at what we do and they'll go, that's good enough. That happened to me when I was at Palo Alto Networks. We inserted as a firewall, they kept their existing firewall, they had all these other devices, and eventually all those went away, and you just had a next-gen firewall. Just through attrition. Through attrition. You're like, you look and you go, well that platform is doing all these functions. Same thing's going to happen to us. The platform of networking is going to do all your network security devices. So any tool or agent or external you know, device that you have to steer traffic to, it's going to go away. You're not going to need it. And, and you're talking multi-cloud, obviously. Yeah. And then I want to do the same thing, whether I'm an Azure or you know, AWS, Google. Same, yeah, same, same, same architecture, same experience, same set of services, it's true multi-cloud native, like you, that's what you want. And oh, by the way, Skills gap, skill shortage is a real thing. Mm. And it's getting worse. Because now yeah. with the recession, you think you're going to be able to add more people? Nope. You're going to have less people. How do I do this in a multi-cloud world with security and all this kind of stuff? You have to put the intelligence in the software, not in your people, right? So speaking of recession, yep. as a CEO of a well-funded company that's got some momentum, how are you approaching it? Do you have like, did you bring in the wartime consigliere? I mean, you've been through, you know, downturns I'm, before. This you are you. I'm the, on wartime already. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Tell me more about how so, you're kind of approaching so, this so recession potential didn't, downturn. didn't change what we were doing one bit because I run it that way from the very beginning. So I've been around for years. That's what Frank Slootman told me. You He's he like said? me. You know what he said? Yeah. Or well, maybe I, I'm I, like him. No, I want to be like Frank because he said, yeah. you know, people talk about, you know, only do things that are absolutely necessary during times like always. this. Always. I always do things that are only That's all I absolutely do. necessary. Why would but, you ever do things that right. aren't necessary? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Most companies don't. Yeah. Uh, recession's very good for people like Snowflake and for us because we run that way anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I constantly make decisions that we have to go and dip. There's people that aren't right for the business, I move them out. Like, I don't wait for some like Sequoia, stupid rest in peace, the world's ending, fire all your people. That has no impact on me because I already operate that way. So we, we kind of operate that way and we are, we are like Satya Nadella even came out and kind of said, I don't want to say cloud is recession proof, but it kind of is. We are so, look, our top customer spends five million a year. Nothing. We haven't even started yet, Dave. That's minuscule. We're not macro, we're micro. Five million a year for these big enterprises is nothing, right? Satya Nadella is now starting to count people who do billion dollar agreements with him. Billion, over a period of number of years. Like, that's the, the scale. We have not even begun. He's got begun multi billion to, dollar agreements. We haven't now. even under, begun uh, to understand the scope of what's happening in the cloud, right? And so, yeah, the recession's happening. I, I don't know, I guess it's impacting somebody. It's not impacting me. It, it's actually accelerating things because it's a flight to quality and customers go and say, I can't get gear on on-prem anyway because of the uh, shortage, you know, the, uh, uh, get chips. Um, and that's not the right thing. So guess what? The recession says, I'm going to stop spending more money there and I'm going to put it into the cloud. All right, so you opened up Pandora's box. I, mean, I want to ask you about your sort of management philosophy. When you come into a company to take to go lead a company like that. Yeah. How, what, what's your approach to assess the team? Who do you, who do you decide, how do you decide who to, 
keep on the bus, who to throw off the bus, put in the right seats. So and every, how long does that take you? Doesn't take long. When I joined, we were 30, 38 people. We're now 525. Um, and my view on everything, and I'm, I, I, I've never met Frank Slubin, but I guarantee you he has the same philosophy. You have a one year contract, me included. Next year, the board might come to me and say, you are the right CEO for this year, you're not next year. Ben Horowitz taught me that. It's a one-year contract. There's no multi-year contract. So everybody in the company, including the CEO, has a one-year contract. So you would say that to the board, hey, if I, you can find somebody if, better. If, and, and you know what, I'll be me. the first one to pull myself, fire myself, and say, we're, we're replacing me with somebody better. Right now, there isn't anybody better. So it's me, so okay. Next year, maybe there's somebody better. Or we hit a certain point where I'm not the right guy. I'll, I'll, I'll pull myself out as the CEO. But also internally, the same thing. Just because you're the right guy this year, and we hire people for the, what you need to do this year. We're not going to, we don't hire, oh, like this is the mistake a lot of companies make. Well, we want to be a billion dollars in sales, so we're going to go hire some loser from HPE who's worked at a company for a billion dollars, and by the way, has no idea how they became a billion dollars, right, in revenue, or billions of dollars, but we're going to go hire them because they must know more than we do. And what, every single time you bring them in, what you realize, they're idiots. They have no idea how we got to that. And so you, you don't pre-hire for where you want to be, you hire for where you are that year, and then if it's not right, and then if it's not right, you be really nice to them. Have great severance packages, be, be respectful for people, and be honest with them. I guarantee you Frank Slootman's not, if you're not, just had this conversation with a sales guy before I came in here. Very straight conversation, Northeast hockey player mentality. We're straight. If you're not working out or I don't think you're doing things right. You're going to know, and so it's a one-year, it's a one-year contract. That's what you do. So you don't have time. Okay, you don't so, have the luxury so, of time. So, I mean, that's probably the hardest part of, of any leadership job. Is and people don't like confrontation. They like to put it off, but you don't run away from it. It's you all just say, in the hey. confrontation. Right. That's where relationships are built. Why do war buddies hang out with each other? Because they've gone through hell, right? It's in the confrontation, and it's, it's actually with customers too, right? If there's an issue, you don't run from it, you actually bring it up in a very straightforward manner and say, hey, we got a problem, right? They respect you, you respect them, da ba ba, and then you come out of it and go, you know, you have to fight. It's like, a, like with your wife, you have to fight. If you don't fight, it's not a relationship. You got to see, in that, in that tension is where the relationship's built. So I should go home and have a fight tonight? You got to have a fight with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, Satya Nadella and Larry Ellison. I interesting point, I want to come back to that. What Oracle did is actually pretty interesting, doing yeah. I mean, for their use case. Yeah. You know, it's not your thing, they but were, it's like well, low latency database across clouds. Yeah. Who would ever th thought that? But I mean, we amazing. love it. We love it because it drives multi-cloud. It drives, um, and, and, and I actually think we're going to have multi-cloud applications that are going to start happening. Um, right now you don't. You have developers that, that, that kind of will use one cloud, but as we start developing, and you call it the super cloud, mm -hmm. right, when that starts really happening, the infrastructure is going to allow that. Networking and network security is that bottom layer that Aviatrix helps. Once that gets all handled, the app people are going to say, so there's no friction, so maybe I can use autonomous database here, I can use this service from GCP, I can use that service, and, and put it all into one app. So, where does the app run? It's a multi-cloud app. It doesn't exist today. No, but that doesn't going. happen today. It's, 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 happen it's well, going to happen. But that's kind of what the, the vision was, you know, seven, eight years ago of what, what gonna the, that would be. You know, the, the original premise of hybrid. Right. Right. Um, I think Chuck Hollis, the guy who was at EMC at the time, he wrote this piece on, he called it private cloud, but he was really describing yeah. hybrid cloud application running in both places, that never happened, but it's starting to. I mean, yeah. it's, the infrastructure is getting put in place to enable that, I guess is what yep. you're saying. Yep. Yeah, cool. And multi-cloud is, is becoming not just four plus one, as a lot of enterprises, it's becoming N plus one. Meaning, you're going to have more and more, and then there won't be infrastructure clouds like AWS and so forth, but it's going to be industry clouds, right? You've, you've talked about that. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah. back to super cloud, you're going to have Goldman Sachs creating clouds, and you're going to have AI companies yeah. creating clouds, you're going to have clouds at the edge, you know, for edge computing, and all these things all need to be networked with network security integrated, and you mentioned, comes back to you, Aviatrix. You mentioned Ben Horowitz, that's Mark Andreessen. All, all companies are software companies. All companies are becoming cloud companies, yeah. or, or they're missing opportunities, or they yeah. might get disrupted. Every single company I talk to now, you know, whether you're Heineken, they don't think of themselves as a beer company anymore. We are the most technologically you know, advanced brewer in the world. Like, they all think they're a technology company now. 
whether you're making trucks, whether you're making sneakers, whether you're making beer, you're now a technology company. Every yeah. single company in the world. We are too, we're, we're building a media cloud. You're, you know, John you're a technology is company. laying that out. And yeah. And that's, we got yeah. developers doing yeah. that. That's our, that's our future. Yep. You know? Cool, hey, All thanks right. for coming on, man. Thank you. Great to see you. All right. Thank you for watching. Keep it right there, we'll be back right after this short break. The Cube's coverage, AWS Reinforced 2022 from Boston. Keep it right there. Getting tired, how many interviews?